If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. When you do, make sure you hit the notification bell. That means that you will be informed of when a new video has been released. If you would like to take that support one step further, you can do that via Patreon, which is an optional monthly service you can donate money towards the channel. Or you can go over to Kofi. Dot com and for the price of a coffee you can help donate towards the channel as well links for all of those will be in the description of the video and without further ado enjoy the video how did the how did the move to it which come about from a youth level perspective, um, you know, was there somebody that came along and scouted you at the time where, where you kind of invited along for trials that, you know, and then they signed you up? What was that process like as a yeah. youngster? So, so when I, when I was, I was 10 at the time, um, Ipswich didn't have an academy. It was a school of excellence. So okay. what, that, what they basically had were just training camps in different areas Right. Um, and I was playing for another local team and we were just playing in this tournament and it was Colin, Colin Suggett. I don't know if you remember the name. Yes. Yeah. And he, he was at our tournament um, and i had done particularly well in that tournament. And he just came up to my mum and dad and said, you know, look, we're Ipswich Town. And, you know, we'd love Dean to come along to our School of Excellence um, and just come down and train and, and then we'll sort of see what happens. And then that was it. And it kind of, I was in the School of Excellence and then they changed within six months, a year of me being there to an academy. And just naturally, they just kind of took a groups from each School of Excellence and said, right, you're going to be our academy right. um, in, all, in, all the different age, in all the different age groups. And so it was just a case of, you know, now, now you've got to travel to Ipswich on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, <laughs> and uh, mum and dad were buzzing um and then um yeah that was it and then i was a, an academy academy player from 11 right up to i left at 21 so at the time you were the the cent- the end the, the sorry the uh the center for excellence was that that was near your that was near you in essex so is that right yeah Brent, brentwood so it was okay. actually yeah brentwood so that it was straight down the a12 so they must have had like um I don't know how many centres they had, but mm. it, they would have been like a certain mileage of of where Ipswich was. Yeah, um, Brentwood obviously straight down the A12, and we used to just travel from from where we was, which was only about sort of half an hour, right. right to go train. Yeah, it was quite quick for them to kind of change it into an academy, and then they invited me along to that. So, like I said, mum and dad, <laughs> they they were obviously they were really happy that I've been yeah. invited, along, but they didn't enjoy the driving. Yeah. So was uh, was Ipswich the first and kind of our only club that really took an interest to in you at that age, or had other things kind of happened prior to? This? As far as I know, because um, they would have approached my mum and dad. Um, yeah. That was the first club that you know showed any interest. You know, yeah. I, was, I was just playing locally at the time, and um, and then yeah, just sort of stuck with it. So yeah. yeah. And then, and no, then no, was... no one else, nothing like Man United came along with anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're obviously then just going through the youth ranks obviously going up in the age groups etc um at 16 that time then comes around for you you know you get that opportunity to make your debut for so it's kind of just talk me through the build up to that had you been in the reserves at that point or were you still like under 18s or you know how 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 did that how did that happen it's it's quite strange really because i was yeah like i said i was 16 um i came through all the different age groups under 11s 12s 13s 14s 15s, and but i was always like i was always kind of playing a year up um, okay. yeah yeah so maybe it's kind of 13 14 they started putting me just in the year above right so when i was like when i was 14 i remember playing um in the same age group as like ben and darren ambrose and they 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 won the um uh, the the league cup or something like that. They beat Newcastle in the final. Right. And um, I travelled with, and at the time I think they were under seventeens or eighteens, um, and I was only fourteen. And they 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 took me along. So I got to I got to play. I played ten minutes at St James's Park, and that was like that was incredible. Yeah. Um, but that was at four, that was at fourteen. So when I was playing sort of under seventeens, and then I was like 17s 18s at kind of 14 15 mm. and then when i went when i turned 16 um 
basically what happened was they had loads of injuries in the first team, like the strikers. Right. And it coincided with the same time as the the lads that were doing their A levels. So so all the boys are like 17, 18. Right. And like, they were doing all their, their exams. Yeah. So like the ones that they kind of thought, you know, they'd be able to replace or like sit on the bench or come in the squad. They they were so the exams and education was so important yeah. for all the young the young lads coming through um, that they just said, look, we don't want to take these boys away from their education because they've been working so hard. I mean, they they probably thinking I couldn't care less. Like, <laughs> I was going, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah going, a bit like, that off. <laughs> so um, a week before the game, they already kind of knew they had their injuries, um, so they just needed to bolster up the squad a bit. And they just said, you know, look, you're going to be training with the first team. Wow, and um, and obviously didn't know how to take that I was just it was just incredible um so I had a week you know Monday to Friday of training with with um well grown men because at the time I was like like? um scary yeah really scary (laughs) because if you think if you think of like the the day and or the, the, the player of today they're quite um some of them aren't they're not as boisterous and it's not as like um, cutthroat as it was back then yeah. and um, I walked in as a 16 year old into a dressing room with well Jim Magilton <laughs> I've, only, I've only got a name in because that kind of gives you a, a kind of a, a that's, that's all you need to say yeah <laughs> what the dressing room was like and yeah. um, Jim an incredible footballer but he was old school you know real old school and um, he was brilliant with me he put his arm around me and, and he and he and he helped me along, but yeah. you can just imagine how, how scary that must that might have been. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then obviously, you, you know, match day comes around. You're in the squad. Um, did you kind of get any inkling that you were actually going to be making a debut at that point, or do you were you just kind of sitting there thinking, "Wow, this in itself is an experience." I thought I thought I was going to be just in the stand at the start, um, so I was obviously buzzing just to go along. Mm. Um, and then, then when he named the the bench, I was obviously on the bench, and I thought, oh my god, this is like because I just just to see the name on the back of the shirt, and yeah. it was just that was that was that I could have just finished my career there. <laughs> uh, and then, um, yeah, with about what was it, twenty minutes to go, twenty five minutes to go, he sort mm. of um, you know Dino go and get warmed up, and a little pat on the head just to say, go on, on you go. Go and go and enjoy go and enjoy yourself, and then the rest is history, really. So then, that first bit where you then take your, you know, the step over the line. Yeah. What was that emotion like? Could do, could do you have any time to process it, or were you just what what was kind of going through your head at the time? No, you don't. You don't really. Um, you don't have any time. No, you just kind of go and get warmed up. Yeah, no way. Like you don't get. You just start sprinting up and down the line like a lunatic, <laughs> um, and then. He's saying, you know, you, you know, you're coming on, and Joe, Joe Raw was was incredible, really. I, when I look back at the managers that I've had, yeah, um, I always thought Joe was like um, he was on me all the time, or like all the time to like hit target and you know, like work on this, do this, do this. And at the time, I thought he was just on me and like being harsh. But actually, when I look back, he he was brilliant. You know, he was such a good man manager. Um, yeah, and I didn't, I probably didn't appreciate him as much back then as i do now kind of thing yeah yeah uh, yeah it's a shame really if i was maybe three or four years older under joe i think i would have done a lot better right. uh, yeah. so that's something that when he sort of put his arm around me and he's patting me on the head before i'm going on you know what great management that is he didn't give me loads of like you got to do this you got to do that you got to do this yeah it was just you know, go on son on you go go and go and have, go and have, have some fun you know in front of a full house at carroll road it was like okay yeah. let's Let's do it then. Let's go and have a laugh. And that was it. And next week, you know, I'm setting up two goals to win the game. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I probably should have mentioned this before we started, but a bit as a Norwich fan, um, it was, I do remember you actually coming on that day. Um, so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I need Adam here, having the Ipswich part of me. Do you know what I mean? But um, no, I do remember you coming on that day. Was you there? Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. I had I had a season ticket right from when I was about six years old, um, and it was just one of those that you just you get you just you sit here to see this name sort of like pop up on the screen. It's like, 
Who? Yeah. Who's that? Oh, okay. All right, don't, don't worry about it. If you haven't heard of that, don't worry about it. And next thing you know, you're sitting up with his goals and you're just like, for Christ's sake. Yeah. But I think, was that the game where um, Rob Green was wearing his was wearing his hat and the sun was like really in it? I'm not going to say this, you know, that was the reason for it, but the sun was like really in his eyes. It was really bright that day, wasn't it? Yeah, he had his cap on. Yeah, like, yeah. He, must, he must have pulled it down too far that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd like, I would like to say I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> no, no, I, that's absolutely fine. But no... I, that moment then where, you know, the full-time whistle goes, you go back into the dressing room, you've just been part of that team, you set up, as you said, two goals on there. When does it really start to sink in what has just happened? Is it kind of like the following day or, you know, when you're in the dressing room, do you instantly just go and breathe? <laughs> I remember it really well because um, it was sort of embedded in me, um, or embedded in me, sorry, mm. um, from a really young age about um, like winning. Like I've always wanted to win like games. Like if I lose, like you ask my wife, I've got, I've got better as I've got older. But <laughs> when I was younger, like you just write the weekend off. You know, right, I wouldn't yeah. speak to anyone and I was you know, devastated. So when you win, it's that, that adrenaline of winning something. It's just, you know, something else. So when I came off of the pitch, I remember being obviously excited and like all the lads were like, you know, they were going crazy over me and like, you know, they, it was it was it was brilliant, but I didn't really s- sort of set in what had just happened. Yeah. Until the ne- until the next day when my dad walked in with the sun. <laughs> right. He walked in because he used to buy the sun all the time, right? And um, he walked in with the sun. I was on like the back page, and um, that that for him was just like you know, for 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 a dad, you know, who sort yeah. of coached me and had tried to help me through. For him, that was amazing. And that was the bit that kind of made me think, right, okay, I've actually done something pretty yeah. cool there. And, you know, where where might this lead me? So it's it and then from from then on it was just like going in going in back on the Monday and everyone was still buzzing over the weekend. Because ultimately you got you can't forget it was a derby, big derby game. Yeah. You know, so it had always had that added spice and um I didn't realise at the time how important it was, not just for the players, but for the whole town. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so then after, the, you know, after the game, are you then kind of kept in with the first team then? Or do you kind of go back to where you where you, you know, where you were in the under 18s? Or how did that kind of transpire? Because I know you made a couple of more appearances throughout the rest of the season, didn't you? Because the game was in March and yeah. then you made a few more appearances. So did they then like what they see and kept you in with the first team? Yeah, kind of like like you just said, they kind of when players were coming back fit, they just said, like, look, you know, you go back to kind of 18s and the reserves and stuff like that and yeah um, but I, at the time I couldn't care less I was just like no it's fine yeah whatever I, I was just so happy to be to be able to make my debut and, and yeah it didn't bother that because they were so good at sort of uh, bringing players through that you had that real trust in what they were telling you so if they yeah. said that you might be just that little bit too young at the moment go back and and learn a bit more back in mm. that kind of age group and then maybe come back come back better and stronger for next year and you know and so I just trusted them said I was never going to argue I just said yeah absolutely I'll just I'll do, I'll do whatever yeah and then was there any kind of conversation during the summer where they said like you're going to be more involved this season around because then you made yeah. you made a few more appearances obviously you got your hat trick um <laughs> yeah. the following season so yeah. you did were, were you promised more game time or did that kind of just naturally happen as the season kind of progressed um yeah naturally really I think when when after the debut happened, it, it was sort of quickly spoken about signing my first professional contract. Yeah. Um, my 17th birthday was June, and obviously I made my debut in March. Yep. Uh, so they kind of said, obviously, very quickly, like we need, we want to sign you on a, a professional contract. Um, so it wasn't necessarily like you're going to play more games. It was just like you kind of knew you was going to be more involved when they were giving you a professional contract. So it yeah. kind of like you just, you just made sure you was ready. And um, so I just started to get a few more appearances here and there. And, um, and then, yeah, like you said, the, the, the hat trick game was, um, yeah, that was, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is one of those that really stands out um, from, yeah. from my memory. Cause I think the game was on sky. I think I remember v- vaguely watching it, but that's when you kind of really experienced, I say exploded onto the scene and from like, you know, from a bit of a nerd's perspective, a football manager perspective, I was like, right, <laughs> Dean's one of those players you go and sign straight away because his potential is absolutely massive at this uh, point. Uh, <laughs> so 
after, again, after that hat trick, kind of how were you feeling? You know, was it, um, did you kind of feel like, you know, you you made it, so to, so to speak? Were you kind of like in this bubble of I'm just enjoying myself or now I've scored this, I, I deserve to get more game time? What were you kind of feeling at that age? So I was always, so I was always, I still sort of am really. I'm, I never, I physically, um, I never developed until a little bit later on. So right. when I was getting like more game time, I was just enjoying it so much, just being part of it, that yeah. I never sort of felt like I deserved to be playing week in, week, week out, week in, week out. Right. Because I was kind of like, when I was looking at the other players, I was just thinking, yeah, but he's, he's quality, you know, like right. he's unbelievable. Yeah. So I never really felt like I deserved to keep playing. But every time I got the chance, because there was like, it was, oh, I supported Spurs as a kid. But it's just my club, you know. I've been there. I was there for a long time, and so just to just to put on a shirt for me was was enough. Um, mm-hmm. But then it was like the the week before um, I scored that hat trick. Um, I started up with Darren Ben, and Ben he scored a hat trick the week before. Right. And it, and it was just really funny because he banged in a hat trick, and it was like you know, well done, Ben. ben he, you know, tap him on the back. He's banging in loads of goals anyway. Like well done, another three yeah. goals. <laughs> and then the week after, because we'd obviously done well the week before, um, I scored a hat trick, and it was like, oh my god, like, <laughs> like this is unbelievable! You scored three goals, and it's like, it's just the difference between me and him. Yeah. At the time, he was just like skyrocketing, just doing yeah. incredibly well, and it was almost expected for him to get a hat trick. Then when I scored a hat trick, it was like, oh my god, who's this kid? <laughs> like, he's just he's just scored a hat trick live on Sky against Watford. You know what's going on there? So yeah. it was, um, yeah, it was it was a bit surreal, but I never I never felt like I um, sort of deserved to keep playing week in week out. I was just grateful. No, the, the reason I asked is because we had Paul Hayes on a couple of weeks ago, um, and he mentioned that towards the end of one season he started getting a few sub appearances for Norwich, and then done well during the pre season, and was told if you do well in pre-season, we'll get you more involved in the first team. And the moment that didn't happen, he was straight away knocking on the door. Yeah. You told me you were going. You told me you were going to get me involved. Why am I not involved? And it's just. In, I just wanted to get your kind of perspective on where you, yeah. were, considering you were actually in the team, doing yeah. quite well, and just to find out the difference between both. You know, it's, both strange, it's strange because when at that age, so seven, sixteen, seventeen, it was I was still a boy, I was still a baby, really. I look at I look at my young brother when he was sixteen, seventeen, and I thought, oh my god, like. I was actually playing men's football <laughs> at that age. You know, that's just, you know, I wasn't ready, really. Right. But when I got to kind of 18, 19, and then I was I was doing well in reserves or I was doing well when I was coming on or I scored a couple of goals or um, whatever it may be, then I started to think, like, hang on a minute, like, I think I should be playing. Yeah. Um, and that's when I decided, when I wasn't playing, and that's when I'd go and knock on the door. And I would say, look, I feel like I need to play. And yeah. whether that's here, whether that's here, or whether that's somewhere else, I need to be playing because this is killing yeah. me. Like I want to be on that pitch. Yeah. Um, hence why I went on loan so much because I was just I just wanted to play all the time. I was just about to ask, is that the reason why there were so many? Because I'm yeah. just kind of looking through your, your your sort of stats on 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 online and. You were st- you were getting games at Ipswich, but it wasn't maybe like on a consistent yeah. enough basis. So is that the reason why the loans were they all instigated by you because of you? The fact you just wanted to play football or was that more? Yeah. The- no, it was, it was mainly me. It was quite funny, really, because when I used to go and knock on the door, um, they Joe Joe Royal, especially when I first knocked on his door. He was just like he was actually quite impressed that I'd done it. I'd said that I'd, I'd kind of come in and I'd because he kind of knew me like and I was quite yeah. a, you know I wasn't a brash kid who's going to be like oh, I need to be like doing it. It was just like not to the Joe like or, or Gaffer like Gaffer like um, I want to be playing. You know I really I'm desperate to be playing. I want to go and score goals. I want to go and do this and and he just went look at the moment you're not going to get games here. Yeah, he said I, I love you being in around it and being close to the squad but at the moment I've got two or three strikers in front of you. Yeah. It's like I was like, well I need to go. Can I can I go? And he was like, Do you know what? Yeah. Go yeah. go play some football. And if I need you, they they always used to have like a clause in there to say if we really need you back, 
yeah. you know, I'll, I'll bring you back. And that, and that for me, I, that wasn't a problem because, you know, ultimately that's what going on loan is. You go on loan to impress and then you come back and you play for your, your, your club, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's all I ever wanted was to, to play as many games and score loads of goals for Ipswich. And when it wasn't happening, I was like, well, I'll, I'll need to go and play somewhere else. Yeah, that's fair enough. And we kind of go forward through the seasons and then it gets to the end of the 18, uh, sorry, 2008-9 season. You're then released by Ipswich. Did you, how, how did you feel when, when that decision was made? Because, again, I saw the conversation I had last night with Alex Bradley, he's a youngster currently playing um, at Lincoln. And he said that actually when he was released by West Brom, because he knew that he wasn't going to be getting the right game time, it was actually more of a relief to to be leaving. Do, would you kind of describe it in the same in the same way that it's just like, right, I can now reinvent myself? Yeah, I think slightly different for me in that because I was at the club from when I was 10. Mm. Um, and then Roy Keane came in. Um, <laughs> and there was... Well, the, the thing is, like, you hear so many stories about Roy King. Yeah. And when he first came in, it was like the last couple of weeks. It was really strange when he got appointed. It was like two or three weeks left of the season. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it was just his chance just to basically stand there, watch a few players and make decisions on them. Right. Um, and we had about 11, 12 players out, out of contract. Okay. I was, I was one of them. And so I kind of had it in my mind already that he would want to have a big clear out and get rid of a load of people. Okay. And that's basically, basically what he did. And I remember going in and already feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm going here and I need to sort of resurrect my career somehow. Right. So he was so good. You know, like he wasn't, it wasn't just like, yeah, look, we're not having uh, like all the best kind of thing. Right. He was really polite in saying, you know, I've spoken to all the other staff in and around the place and, um, they speak so highly of you, but they've all they've all sort of been in an agreement that whilst I'm manager, I'm not going to get the opportunity. So the best thing for me is to go. They were never going to ask for any money for me because right. they didn't want, they didn't want to stand in my way of progressing again. Right. So um, which again was a testament to the club. Really, they could have yeah. made a few put a few quid, but they just didn't. They just said no. You know, we we need you to go and play some football. Fair uh, enough. You're going to have a career and. And that was it. So at the time, I kind of I knew it was coming, but I remember getting home and I was I was I was upset. I, I, I cried, and um, it was like it was a tough time for me that I knew I was never going to be playing for that club ever again. Well, at that well, time, it's a, I, it's I, a massive I, part you know, of your life, isn't it? It's a yeah, massive it's chunk huge, of your life, huge, so it's understandable. Yeah, huge part, and um, yeah. So I knew, I didn't even though I knew it was coming, and it was yeah, it was really upsetting and. I just knew, right, this is it now. I've either got to roll my sleeves up and find somewhere and go and uh, mm-hmm. prove, prove them wrong kind of thing or, or I do something else and, you know, I roll my sleeves up. 